Hey everybody, this is Mr. Horton with a series of video backup lessons for Studio Art 1, Studio Art 2, and film appreciation and cinematography. <laughs> Verney Arts, Iona Prep. All right, guys, this is our new project, which is called Superhero Costume Design, where I'm going to make you guys draw up a picture of a superhero that you are making up that is based around an animal. The reason why we're doing this is because I have just made you guys, optionally, read through a Spider-Man comic. Now, Spider-Man's rogues gallery, all of his villains, tend to be based on animals. So we are doing a project based off of basically like Spider-Man villains. And you are doing this while I am going through the comic book history lesson and I'm just bombarding you with hundreds of images of various superheroes and supervillains. All right, so I've broken up this project into five steps. And of these five steps, I am doing this project twice. I am doing this project easy and I am doing this project hard to give you guys just a, a range to show you what you could do. All right, so... Step one in this project, you guys are going to pick an animal that you want to base the look of your superhero or supervillain off of. You're going to find a picture of that animal on uh, Google and save it to your phone. Now, for my examples, my easy example, I have picked a parrot, okay? For my hard example, I have picked an octopus, Okay, it tends to be that if you want to go by difficulty in animals, it usually goes by things like muscle structure, how movable they are, or how much fur they have. But in general, animals tend to be, like any animal is hard to draw. So again, just use your discretion, pick something you think you could do, and go off that. Okay, so first step, pick an animal, find an image of the animal. Step two, you're going to pick the powers of your superhero. Okay, you could pick more than one. All right, and then in particular, you're gonna to wanna to think about in this step, how are the powers you're picking going to affect the costume of the character? So for my examples, for my parrot, I'm picking flight, and then for the octopus, the harder example, I'm picking three powers. I'm picking telepathy, I'm picking strength, and I'm picking the ability to breathe underwater, kind of like Aquaman, all right? Now, uh, going back to what I was saying, though, how does the powers affect the costume? I have three examples here. So, for example, Flash's costume, he has Pegasus wings that are... Uh, worked into the costume on his boots and on his mask, okay? Spider-Man has webbing on the, on the surface area of his costume, and someone like Punisher actually has gun clips worked into his belt that form the teeth of the skull on his chest, okay? So you wanna think about that, like how are you gonna work the power into the costume aesthetic, okay? Step three, make up a name for the hero or the villain. Okay, and is the name worked into the costume? And again, examples of this, so Superman has the Superman S, obviously on his chest. Daredevil has the D, D for Daredevil on his chest. Or something more subtle like Venom has a spider symbol on his chest, but it's in a silhouette. It doesn't say Venom. Okay, do you want to work the name into the costume? Do you want to work an image of the, of the, the animal into the costume? Again, think about stuff like that. Do you want to avoid that? Okay, so for my two examples, my parrot, my easy example, I picked the name Eclectus, which is a type of parrot, okay? And then for the octopus, I picked the mimic, because again, a mimic is a type of octopus. So again, Google around, Google the animal you have, and Google names, maybe Latin names. There's a lot of very cool ways you could do with the name of the character. Step four, you wanna, end, you wanna pick up reference shots for the character you're making. So what I mean by that is, say for example, you're picking a shark, okay? You're probably gonna to wanna to look up pictures of like things like a surfer, a diver, okay? Things like water-based images, all right? If you're picking something like an armadillo, armor, you're gonna to wanna to maybe look at a bomb defusal person from like, like a bomb defusal vest, okay? Maybe a SWAT uniform, okay? You also can reference similar superheroes, but be careful not to trace. Don't rip off things, okay? So like maybe if I'm looking at a shark again, maybe I'm looking at pictures of Aquaman, all right? Now for my easy example, my parrot, I grabbed a picture of one of those like uh, 
those like Red Bull jet packs. Okay, and I also picked up a picture of one of these characters from this old 1980s cartoon called Battle of the Planets, which was like bird superheroes. Okay, for the octopus, I grabbed a picture of an astronaut and I grabbed a picture of a big daddy from, uh, from Bioshock. Okay, um, and I kind of wanted somewhere in between those two things. All right, so step five, our, our meat and potatoes of this entire project is actually drawing this thing. Let's go on to that. Okay, so here we are with step five, which again is going to be drawing, refining, coloring, and just making up the whole project for the superhero costume design. So your first step of step five is you're going to place your book vertical, okay, because I want to see most of the figure here. Second thing, needs to fill 60% of the page. You need to show the full body from the front this time. So you can't get away with doing a back image. Background's optional. Hands are optional, but again, if you're hiding hands, you have to do it in a logical fashion. So behind the back is fine, but you don't have to show hands. Okay, now you're going to draw the form, and I highly recommend you guys use wireframe again. Okay, you don't have to, but I highly recommend you do it. Now, I gave you guys two examples of difficulty here. An easy example, which I'm calling a T-pose, which this is a classic T-pose. Okay, look literally T-pose. Looks like a T, all right? You can literally use this image for your pose if you want to freehand copy my form onto yours and do this. Remember, this is more of a project about the costume than it is the pose, okay? I care more about how you're designing the character than I do the actual pose of it. The one I'm going to be refining into the parrot superhero is going to be this one, which is basically a T-pose, except I just put one arm down because I wanted it a little bit different. Now, for my harder example, I did a dynamic pose. Now, if you want to do a harder one and you want to do a pose that's more super hero like or super villain like you're going to want to do it in motion so i did this picture of what looks like someone jumping i got the knee coming up i see the bottom of the foot this is hard okay now you guys can fully copy my wireframe freehand copy my wireframe here or the t-pose one these are going to be up on classroom do not copy this one but here's the thing if you're going the route of doing the harder one and making your character more dynamic as it is you're probably already committed to it being more difficult so you're not going to want to copy mine anyway okay and again you're also going to want to lean a little bit heavier into looking at reference images of superheroes that are like the character you're picking so for this character i was looking at images of the hulk i wanted like a, a hulking character jumping so he's gonna be like big and yada yada okay but again don't copy this one you can freehand copy these two wireframes if you want to okay but again no tracing don't do that all right so we got these poses down let's go over to the actual drawing process which is going to be refining the drawing which is going to be drawing everything and again the big like uh, push of everything let's go over Okay, so here I am at step five, the refining step where I'm going to be fully drawing this. So at this point, I've already put in the wireframe. I'm not going to walk you guys through the wireframe because it's something we did to death when we did the wireframe project. But again, it's just a normal face. We have a neck and the V shape for the chest, square for the torso, curve for the pelvis. I have using ovals for the femurs and diamond shapes for the ankles. Similarly with the arms, got a teardrop shape for the shoulder blade, oval bicep, diamond for the forearm, bell shapes for the hands, and uh, the fingers I just kind of did little ovals, nothing crazy. Remember, one foot's forward, one foot's to the side. Okay, all right, so on my phone here, I have my source images. I have my picture of my parrot. I have the picture of the glider, like the, the jet pack thing that I wanted, and I have a picture of that superhero from the 80s I was talking about. And I'm going to kind of marry these three things together into what is a superhero uh, costume remember this is a costume based project but it still does mean i have to do things like features all right so let's go through this it's going to be i'm going to speed up the footage just so you can see me working this out
Okay, so I finished penciling everything out, and you can see here I used, for the helmet, I took a lot of inspiration from the 1980s uh, Battle of the Planet superhero, okay? Um, and then most of the costume, I actually used the guy from the Red Bull jetpack thing. That's where I got the idea for putting the E in the belt for his name, which again is uh, a Clectus, which is the type of parrot. I put some parrot feathers on his shoulder blades. I didn't want to go too overboard with that because I thought they looked goofy. Um, I used a lot of the wings in this, and then the boots are straight from the, the Battle of the Planets th guy again. And I just kind of just merged the two together, and it it looks pretty good. He looks kind of like a like a ripped off version of of um, Falcon a little bit. I'm very happy with this. All right, so my next step here, now that I've actually refined this, my next step is I'm gonna color and I'm gonna clean it, and I'm this is where if I'm going to do it, I'm gonna start outlining things. Then my step after that is I'm gonna label it. I'm gonna make sure the character's name is prominently in here. I'm gonna make sure that I show his powers, which I already have up here, and the animal. You're gonna wanna label it with the animal you use, so it says parrot, powers, flight. I'm gonna put his name in somewhere over here, and I'm gonna color and refine this. We're gonna cut to that in a second. So for my parrot superhero, I ended up doing an outline of Sharpie and pen, uh, and then I ended up going into the coloring end of it. Remember, you don't have to outline it with anything. You can go right to coloring if you want to go to coloring. Okay, so here's the finished picture for uh, my parrot superhero, my uh, easy example. Um, I kind of went nuts with the tropical coloring of it, which... These, I used a lot of teals, and I used marker. I, I'm, again, I don't give you guys marker, but if you have marker and you want to use marker, you can try to use marker, but I have guys have color pencil. And I went through and I colored it all in. I put in some extra detail as I was um, working, but not like a crazy amount from the drawn version, but I'm happy with how this uh, came out. He's got the E on the belt and the, the helmet and the backpack thing. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, so next thing I'm gonna show you guys is my hard example. Now, finally, my harder example, the octopus uh, character. Now, I'm not gonna go through every step of this one like I did with the easier one, because like I said, if you're committed to doing a dynamically hard pose like this, you probably know what you're doing to some extent, and you don't need me walking you through it as it is. So I have this pose here, which is like a jumping pose. It's like the pose you'd see like the Hulk do. Okay, so we're gonna now go to this being refined, which I used pencil with, and then the ink. And finally, the finished picture. I used most of the astronaut imagery, and then I used some of the Big Daddy from Bioshock. In particular, I put a tank on his back and I gave him some weights on his arm, but besides that, I didn't really use much of that. And I got this cool, like, telekinetic blast going around, kind of like what you'd see, like, Daredevil do, which is kind of cool. And again, I put the name of the character down here. I have the animal, and I have the powers. All right, so this is my hard example. I'm not expecting uh, even half of you to try to do something this difficult. Go easier if you can. Okay, now let's do this one more time, but the next time I'm gonna do it, this next time, I wanna focus on using a completely different type of wireframe. Okay, a way easier one. Let's go to that. If you have any questions about the assignment, email me or refer to the project on Google Classroom. See you in class.